In the year 1817, Jane Austen started work on a new book that she would later call Sanditon. She wrote 11 chapters of the novel before having to stop writing it in the middle of March 1817 due to sickness. The oldest of the Hayward girls, Charlotte Hayward is still single and lives at home. Her father is a country squire and a gentleman, and the family resides in Sussex, which is a beautiful coastal county in the southeast of England. Because it is typically a peaceful area in which to reside, it is all the more remarkable when Mr. and Mrs. Parker are involved in an accident at the top of the hill close to the Hayward residence. The carriage in which they are traveling tips over, and Mr. Parker sustains an injury. The Haywards extend an invitation for them to stay the night at their house, in the hopes that Mr. Parker will be able to get some rest and that their broken carriage can be fixed. The Parkers end up staying for two weeks, and throughout that time, Mr. Parker's primary subject of discussion is his cherished hometown of Sanderton. It used to be a little dot on the map, a fishing hamlet known only to its people, but Mr. Parker and his business partner, Lady Denham, have been striving to make Sanderton into a fashionable holiday location over the last couple of years. Mr. Parker is very pleased with the bathing machines that he has put in place so that customers may change into their swimsuits before entering the water. In addition to that, he just had a brand new house built for his family, where they may take use of their very own personal bathing machine. The Parkers return to Sanderton with Charlotte as their summer guest when the carriage and Mr. Parker's damaged foot are ultimately mended. Charlotte doesn't waste any time once they get there and immediately starts getting to know the locals, beginning with Lady Denham, who is immensely wealthy despite having lost both of her husbands and has been widowed twice. Both her title and her niece Clara Brereton came from her second husband. Clara is a really lovely young girl, and she is also quite gorgeous. Nevertheless, she is broke, and because of this, her aunt feels pity on her and is supporting her financially. In addition, Clara is the only member of the extended Denham family who is not actively seeking a portion of Lady Denham's wealth. This is more than can be said for Edward Denham and his sister Esther, who are her nephew and niece by marriage. It doesn't take long for Charlotte to feel at home, and not long after that, Mr. Parker's younger siblings, two younger sisters, and a younger brother, pay her a visit. Charlotte suspects that the three of them are exaggerating their problems due to the fact that they seem to be in good physical condition and have an unusually high amount of energy for individuals who are supposed to be in such terrible health, claiming they're invalids. Diana, one of the sisters, is in Sanderton on a mission for a rich family that now resides in the West Indies. It is subsequently revealed that nobody has really requested for her assistance but she has inserted herself into their company and is keen to keep the connection. In addition, she has information that could spark Mr. Parker's interest in particular. Throughout the summer, Sanderton will play host to a sizable number of guests from a girls' school. The information provided by Diana has been, at best, ambiguous. The arrival of the group from the school makes it abundantly evident that the family from the West Indies and the party from the school are one and the same thing. They are a group of three, Miss Lamb, a young and wealthy heiress, and the Beaufort sisters, two typical English girls. The latter is promptly disregarded by Lady Denham but she expresses an interest in being introduced to Miss Lamb on the grounds that she is affluent and would make an excellent match for her slacker nephew Edward. Sidney Parker, the second eldest of the Parker siblings, shows up unexpectedly to wait for the arrival of two friends who will be staying with him. Charlotte is drawn to him, and there is a spark between them. Charlotte visits Lady Denham's house with Mrs. Parker and notices Clara and Edward huddled together in a suspicious manner. 
Charlotte wonders why Sir Henry Denham's portrait is prominently displayed above the fireplace, while that of her first husband, who actually owned the house she is still living in, is reduced to a miniature in the room. If you have any suggestion of which book I should summarize, please let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.